Genetically modified organisms, or food that is genetically engineered, has been a ripe source for controversy ever since they were widely introduced to the food market in the early 90s. Genetically modifying or engineering a plant species allows scientists to create favorable gene traits and characteristics that would otherwise be impossible in the natural world through breeding and other conventional methods. As a result, these new breeds of plants should exhibit high crop yields for farmers as well as unique features that ensures the plant's healthy life from germination to harvest. Some examples of these features are abilities of certain genetically engineered corn or potatoes that are able to produce their own toxins, which deters pests from exterminating the crop, ultimately protecting farmers from being financially ruined. Fish genes have even been put into tomato species to create a greater resilience to cold weather, and the list of possibilities in the genetically modified organism world are endless. While this all seems positive and beneficial, as is usually the case with things that are too good to be true, genetically modified organisms have actually had an irrepressible effect on not only our environment, but on consumers and farmers as well. At this point, though, the world is sadly not left with many other viable solutions to feed our ever-increasing population that is growing out of control. Monsanto and companies of the like are primarily responsible for the shutting down of 200 seed companies in just over a decade. These mom-and-pop seed companies simply cannot compete with the amount of resources and strength that these bigger companies wield. This has created an unequal and unfair share of power and wealth when it comes to these seed companies, a site which is all too familiar with the famous 1% owning most of America's wealth. As a result of this consolidation, farmers across the U.S. are left with pretty much only one choice when it comes to picking which seeds they want to farm. This lack of choice also provides another negative outcome, the fact that these fewer companies can now charge whatever they please and they know that consumers will still buy the seeds because they need them for their own well-being. The monopolization of the seed industry has proven to make a serious dent in the farming world, negatively affecting producers and consumers by raising the prices on the most basic and necessary items that they have been using for their entire lives. You can see this effect firsthand when you look at the countless number of farmers and farmers' families that have been either forced to sell their home and property, which is their only means of making a living, or to take on multiple jobs, which puts a considerably unnecessary amount of stress and burden on anyone that must undertake this option. The future of agriculture and genetically modified organisms is a bleak and ominous one. The human population on Earth is not going to stop increasing anytime soon, which leads us back to the underlying question of this argument. Will we as a species be able to sustainably support this growing population's hunger and are genetically modified organisms the only viable answer to this life-threatening question? I suggest that GMOs are not the only solution to our problem of feeding the world. We must continue to fight for an honest way of living through a more organic route and not put all of our eggs in one basket when it comes to genetically modified organisms feeding our planet. Our species can survive with a more natural way of living because science has been known to not be foolproof and we cannot rely solely on GMOs as a sustainable source of living and feeding the world's population. We as a society must play our part in ensuring that GMOs do not become the future of our food. Although with the way that Earth's population is exploding, it is troubling to think that genetically modified organisms may be our only choice in survival. This being said, we deserve to know what we are eating and what is in the food that we are eating. This is why I suggest going to labelgmos.org and casting a vote that will help create more transparency when it comes to GMOs and how they are regulated and labeled. If anything, it is at least important for our generation not to be selfish by letting genetically modified organisms potentially harm future generations. One of the most important things that humans depend on for life is that jeopardy of being controlled by companies whose best interest is not in the consumer's well-being, but instead in the amounts of profit that can be made off of consumers, and we have the power to change this.